Hello, welcome to example three, partial fractions, where we look at the uh, third type where there is an irreducible quadratic and how we deal with that. Um, and so we have uh, this enormous uh, fraction here, but the denominator is factored. That's a good thing. Uh, you don't have to factor the cubic. Did you a favor there by factoring it for you? The, uh, the quadratic that's down there, we're going to find out. Uh, what's going on with that? When you have a rational function, a polynomial divided by another polynomial, and you want to find its antiderivative, the name of the technique is generally partial fractions if you can't figure out a way to use of it. Focus your attention on the denominator. Make sure that the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. That means you can start the process. So our denominator is a cubic. Um, and so, yes, we can start it. It looks like it's a quadratic, but no, no, it's a cubic. Um, if ever they are equal to each other in degree, or if the numerator is higher, then there's a process of uh, algebra on top of the algebra that we have to do a uh, long division. Uh, we'll do that in the next example. So what types of the second thing you do after recognizing that and knowing that you can start is that you need to uh, identify what types of terms you have. Correct identification of the type of term will lead to correct decomposition. So x minus 2, that's a linear term. x squared minus 4x plus 13, that is an irreducible quadratic. Um, b squared minus 4ac is negative there. There's no way to factor that. Th that parabola is, is a parabola that's been shifted up. It doesn't intersect the x-axis. There's no real roots to this. Okay, great. Now, how do they decompose? Well, the linear is the easiest to decompose. It gets its own fraction with a constant in the numerator. It's when you have the irreducible quadratic that you have to have a linear numerator. It doesn't matter the order that you do. Like We can put uh, the irreducible quadratic first. We would then use ax plus b. But since it's second here and A is already used, we use BX plus C. Okay. And so there's three constants, A, B, and C we have to find. All right. And the way that you, uh, the way you go about doing that is by figuring out, well, what are you missing? You try to put these guys back together and match it up with the original function. And so you have the original function with, with that kind of a numerator there. And then we have the our, our two fractions that we're looking at now, they basically end up being individually multiplied by the other denominator. So the first fraction gets multiplied by the irreducible quadratic on the numerator and denominator. The second fraction gets multiplied by the linear on the numerator denominator. And at this point, then, that you can just focus on the numerators. Okay, that's where your equation from partial fraction decomposition comes. Okay. And so you could skip that step. There's no need for that step. You could skip it and just say A gets multiplied by the irreducible quadratic. BX plus C gets multiplied by the X minus 2. Um, please use parentheses around the BX plus C. So you don't end up making a small algebra mistake in the very beginning of the problem that makes everything go off um, the track. Um, uh, the problems that I pick, I like to make the, the constants A's, B's, and C's be integers. So if you find yourself with a, a constant of, you know, three thirty eighths, there's a mistake. That's all. And that's a, that's a way you can check yourself along the way. Okay. The way I like to chase down the constants is by um, plugging in an X value. This thing is supposed to be true for all X. So I'm going to pick X values that would make some cancellations happen for me. Um, solving three equations and three unknowns is, is quite difficult. In, in fact, the best way would be using matrices. That's not something we're going to do. And so um, so what we do is uh, we, we pick a value of X that will eliminate a lot of the variables at one time. Um, the perfect choice for X would be X equals 2. When you plug X equals 2 in, it being um, the X minus 2 being multiplied by the BX plus C, there's no need for that term anymore. It's going to zero out and you'll have an equation just about A. Okay, so here we go. We plug X equals 2 in. We zero out the BX plus C term. We don't care about that term. Focus on the A term. Uh, square the 2, that's a 4. Uh, 4 times the 2 is an 8, but it's a minus there. 
and then plus the 13. So 4 minus 8 plus 13. The coefficient on A is a 9. Okay, on the other side of the equals, you got a little bit of a mess there algebraically as well. Um, you'll end up with a, a 24, 6 times 4. Uh, if you double 23, you get 46, and then the 58. So putting those together, I think that's a 36. So if 9A is 36, then of course A is 4. All right, and so don't forget though, if you have, if you have a fraction at that point, some some you know fraction that has crazy um, denominator, just chances are you made a mistake. You can go back and check it. All right, now. That was nice to have x equals 2 to plug in. Now we're going to go back again, and we can look at plugging something else in. Um, we, we know what a is now, and we can use that then to help us figure out what the other guys are. And so b and c are the next attack. We have to figure out what b and c are. But look, b is multiplied by x. So if we choose x equals 0, then the b term will be, you know, it will vanish. And so it'll be times zero. We don't care about it. It will, it will go away. Now, that doesn't get rid of A, but that's okay because we know exactly what A is. And so we have um, A's coefficient now is going to be 13. Uh, the right-hand side is nice and easy to figure out. That'll be 58. Um, B is times zero, so it's just really a C whose times that negative 2. Okay. So 13A minus 2C is 58 but we know a this isn't like we have two unknowns here we we know exactly what a is plug it in any card player knows that 13 times 4 is 52 and so take that 52 shoot it to the other side and then divide by the negative 2 and you'll get the fact that uh oh, what did I, I switched it around the other way i'm sorry i put the 58 that's weird why would i do that i guess i wanted to coefficient to be positive uh, on the constant anyway so uh yeah so 58 subtracted over 2c added over and we have that basically c is negative <laughs> three okay now that we know a and we know c we can now get b just by choosing something else it won't be something that's you know simple to plug in and, and very you know perfect to plug in like the x equals two uh it won't be as convenient to plug in as x equals zero so just something convenient as far as like, you know, arithmetic in your head, you know, without a calculator. And so um, X equals one is a great choice next. OK. Uh, plugging in X equals one. Uh, none of the variables go away. Um, we'll have the coefficient on a now being a 10. One take away four plus 13. That's a 10. And then uh, B plus C is multiplied by a negative two. Negative one, negative one, negative one, sorry. And the right-hand side, what's going on with that? Uh, six take away 23 plus the 58, that is a 41. Okay. Now we know A is four and we know C is negative three, we can get B. Okay, we'll get the 40 and then just think about distributing the negative uh, B, the negative in front of the parentheses, uh, distribute that across. Negative B and plus the plus the three. So 43 minus B must be equal to 41. Well, B must be two then, you know, subtract the 41 over, add the B over or however you want to do it. B is definitely two. All right. So whew, algebra, but we did it. And now we have these constants. Let's get back into calculus. So our original integral is just going to be rewritten as a new integral. It's the same value. It's a different way of writing the function. Why did we do this? So that we can be able to find the antiderivative. The function that, that we have with the decomposition is the same function as we had originally, but we are now on our way to be able to being able to, to take the antiderivative. Um, so the, uh, the first fraction we we'll don't have to worry about. 4 over x minus 2, we can take the antiderivative of that all day long. It's the second fraction, second fraction that's problematic. Um, what you should do is take the denominator and find out what its derivative is. Because if you could let u be equal to the denominator and its derivative is exactly the numerator, then that's, that's, that's great. So if you let u be equal to the denominator, the numerator isn't exactly the derivative, unfortunately. 
um, the derivative of u is uh, 2x minus 4. So we can't, you know, we can't do the whole 1 over u and, you know, be able to um, do natural log of u. But that's okay, though. If, we, if it was, if the numerator was 2x minus 4, then we could do that. So it's not. But we can make it happen. How can you turn 2x minus 3 into 2x minus 4 legally, algebraically? <laughs> okay. That's our goal. And so the way we're going to do it is um, to, to take away 1, to turn it into 2x minus 4. And then, you know, to balance things out, we have to also then go ahead and add 1. So we have our 2x minus 3. We take a 1, take away 1 to make it 2x minus 4. But we add 1 back on to make it back into what it was originally. And so it's just a rewriting of the numerator conveniently. Why is that so convenient? Because now we have, um, we can take it in the 2x minus 4 plus 1, our two separate guys. We can break it up to be 2x minus 4 on top of our denominator and 1 on top of our denominator. I am way over my 10 minute mark. I'm sorry. Um, but that's okay. So we're almost done. So that second integral there is just going to be a natural log. It's denominators exactly, you know, the numerator is exactly the derivative of the denominator. That first fraction is going to be a natural log. All we have to worry about now is this last fraction. 1 over x squared minus 13 plus, uh, x squared minus 4x plus 13. Okay, let's separate. We got the two easy guys on the left. Okay, now we got this integral here on the right. And so um, to handle that integral, we need to complete the square. Okay, we need to represent it so that we have a perfect square plus or minus something. Well, that's easy enough to do. We know how to do that. What we're going to do is uh, push the 13 over. We're going to add something to the x squared minus 4x to make that a perfect square. But to balance things out, we'll also take away that same thing. You know how it works, right? We take half of the coefficient of uh, x. So half of minus 4, we get a minus 2. And we square that and we get a 4. And so we have um, 4 we add to make a perfect square. So 4 we take away from the 13. Okay, that perfect square is x minus 2 quantity squared. And then the 13 minus 4 is a 9. All right. Integrating the first part, you get 4 times the natural log of x minus 2. Integrating the second fraction, you get the natural log of the denominator. So the third fraction now is rewritten in this format, and we're ready to integrate it. We're just going to use a formula that we, that we talked about earlier. We don't have to do a u sub or anything like that. We have uh, formulas that help. It looks like it's, you know, it kind of looks like arctan, right? If, if the 9 was a 1 and there wasn't a minus 2 there, but the minus 2 is just a shift. It's okay. It's, it, we can just, you know, we can just use this arctan formula, the shifted version of it. Have these things ready on your cheat sheet so you don't have to bother at this point. You've been through enough already. 13 minutes just explaining this problem. Okay. Anyway, here we go. And so to finish it off then, what we have is uh, 1 over 3. The arctan of x minus 2 over 3. All right. And the other guys plus a C. Whew, we did it. Heavy reliance on algebra. Light reliance on calculus. That's the nature of these integration by parts questions. I'm um, sorry, not integration by parts. That's the nature of these partial fraction decomposition questions. All right, great. Well, that's the end uh, of this particular question. We have one more example um, where you can't start the process off right away. It isn't going to be um, that the denominator's degree is bigger. And so then you have to figure out what to do. And it's a long division. You have to do long division. So that'll be good for us to review that. All right, take care. I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. And uh, that's it.